My name is Tom McFarland. Uh, I'm from Kentucky, bought several mines from GRE over the years. Uh, right now we're going to talk about the Gold Flint Mine. It's on Gold Flint Mountain, right outside of Butte. It's probably 35-40 minute drive outside of town up on the mountain. Uh, it's a fantastic mine. I think it's been a little misunderstood by people who've been there before. Uh, because when you go in the mountain, in the actual mine, the walls are all the same color. And the reason for that is every year, uh, the mine, the, the spring fall floods the mine. It gets coated on the inside with a, with a dark brown mixture of sand and dirt that kind of obscures where the actual quartz bodies are in the ore. The quartz and the ore was not readily visible in the back of the mine. Um, you had to take a little time to look for it, but I found when you tracked the rusty streaks from the floor up into the walls with just a rock hammer, you can uh, break right into those and a small uh, thin layer comes off the wall and exposes the quartz to you. Then you see the, the actual ore that you're looking for. So it's not too hard to find in there. You just take your time and, and hunt those rusty streaks. I had worked in the mine for quite a while and noticed that the floor originally had tracks in it, rail tracks, where they used the ore cars. And the, the steel rails were gone, but the ties were still there. And I decided to dig around some of these ties one day and found out that the material was really soft. It was rusty looking as well. And that if I dug down for about 12 inches, this material in the floor had an amazing amount of mineralization in it. So I took that and crushed it and ran it and ended up finding gold, silver, galena, all the things, quartz, all the things you find in the mine that were readily uh, available right there in the floor. So the floor of this mine is extremely valuable because of the water that flows through this mine in the, in the spring fall, it deposits everything down in, into the floor of this mine. It needs to be dug out, about a foot of it needs to be taken out and processed. And it's a sandy material, um, it's not extremely hard, there are pieces of quartz and things in it, but it's very, very easy to process once you take it out. Well, it seems that the best thing to do with this material is to bring it out and classify it first because there's an enormous amount of it that is a very fine mesh that you can go ahead and pan. So I would classify it first and then take everything that's heavier and crush it and then, then you can pan it or run it on a table or a blue bowl or how you, however you want to run it. But you need to classify it first because the fines are in there and you get a lot of black sand, a lot of fine gold, pyrites, and silver in, uh, in every time you classify this material down. It's only about 10 or 15 minute drive up the mountain out of view, but once you get on the road to go up to the mountain, uh, to the claim, it's a little steep. So it's about three miles off the main road. It's good to have a four wheel drive, high clearance, just take your time. If you take your time, you don't get in a hurry, you can make it to the mine without any problems at all. So it's on the top of the mountain, so it is at a pretty good elevation. But right outside of the mine is a very, very good flat area that a road leads up to for staging, for camping, uh, to work out of. And it's a fantastic place because you can see down into the valley from there. So it's a great place to work. Once you get there, there's plenty of room and whatever you need to, uh, to get, your, get your work done. The Gold Flint is in a remote area. It is high up on the mountain. It's only a few miles, but it is not where too many people go. AT beers will pass by it every once in a while, things like that. But I think the remoteness of it, of being up there by itself, is what has kept it in good shape and people um, from not really doing anything with it or doing anything to it. It's truly a gem that's hidden up on the mountain. I think it'd be a great mine for someone to come in and spend a month or so in the summer taking the floor out and working all that material on the floor that's loose already and then working the, the rest of the ore bodies, I think someone could do extremely well with this mine. My understanding about the, the history of this mine was it was part of the Nelly mascot group of mines and that they processed there in one central location. And at some point, they had a fire that burnt their, uh, their processing facilities down and at that point, they didn't recover. 